Hi, I'm John Cresswell. Are you new to the Hydra HS225? In this detailed walkthrough, I'll take you through the full setup of this compact thermal optic, from specifications and battery installation to handheld scanning and menu tips. Whether you're a gamekeeper, hunter, farmer, this video will give you everything you need to know to start using your Hydra without you having to read the manual. Remember, if you like this video, please do hit that like button. Also comment with your setup questions and subscribe for part two, where I'll be going through how to use your Hydra as a clip-on in front of your low power variable optic. Welcome to the first video in my DNT HS225 Hydra Thermal Scope user guide series. In this video, you'll see a detailed walkthrough from unboxing through your initial setup in handheld mode. And I'll go through some maintenance tips and everything you need to know so that you can confidently operate the HS225 Let's get started. Before we begin, please note the following safety precautions. Remember not to point your Hydra at a strong heat source like the sun or open flames as this may damage the sensor. The operating temperatures are minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's minus 20 to 50 degrees Celsius. And also do not try to strip the device. If it does have a problem, do send it back to DNT. Unboxing. Let's take a look and see what you get inside the box. So inside the cardboard box, we have a DNT storage case. Unzip the case. In the top of the case, we have a lens cloth and an instruction manual. You probably don't need to read that if you're watching this video. In the main compartment, we have the mount. So it's a zero MOA matte black mount. And in there you'll find the bolts and a torque tool and the mount itself. I will go through how to fit the mount onto your Hydra HS225 in another video. And then the star of the show is the HS225. Comes in a little bag. There you go. It's got a lens cap. And a removable eyepiece. You may need to buy 18650 flat top batteries and a battery charger. My device did not ship with these. So if you want to use your device as soon as you get it, make sure you order the batteries and charger too. Specifications. The sensor resolution on the HS225 is 256 by 192 pixels on an uncalled sensor. It's a 12 micrometer with a noise equivalent temperature difference, NETD, of less than or equal to 25 millikelvins. A lower NETD means the device can distinguish between objects with very small temperature differences, which is vital in low contrast situations like fog, rain or camouflage. It has a 25mm objective lens and a magnification of 3 times to 12 times digital zoom. The display is a micro OLED 1024 by 768 at 50 frames per second. The battery life is up to 5.5 hours and it weighs in at 13.1 ounces, which is 372 grams. Dimensions wise, it's eight by 2.7 by two inches or 202 by 68 by 50 millimeters. And it has an IP rating of IP67. It's recoil resistant up to 800 Gs, which is the equivalent of a 50 BMG. It also has 32 gigabytes of built-in storage and data transfer via the DNT Wi-Fi and DNT app. Features overview. The HS225 offers three-in-one functionality. It can be used in standalone scope, clip-on, or as a handheld monocular. It's compact and lightweight, and it uses readily available 18650 batteries. It has one-shot zeroing capability, picture-in-picture, -picture, hotspot tracking, built-in video and audio recording, and Wi-Fi connectivity for app integration main parts and controls. Let's familiarize ourselves with the main parts, starting from the front of the optic, objective lens and lens cap. 
focus adjustment ring, power button for turning the device on and off and putting into standby mode, a power LED indicator, a zoom button to change from 3, 6, 9 or 12 times zoom, a menu button for accessing the main menu, a record button to record audio and video, a battery compartment with screw cap, a USB-C port and rubber cap for data transfer and power, an adjustable diopter for ocular focus and an eye cup. Power supply. The HS225 uses one 18650 flat top rechargeable battery providing up to five and a half hours of operation. To install the battery, unscrew the battery compartment cap, insert the battery with a positive end facing inward, screw the cap back on securely. Note, the USB-C port on the device does not charge the battery. You must remove the battery before using the USB connection to provide power to the optic. USB and data transfer. Use the included USB-C cable for data transfer. Connect the device to your computer to access recordings. You can browse and transfer files using File Explorer on your PC or laptop. Remember, the USB-C port does not charge the battery. On-screen display. The on-screen display shows you useful information such as recording status, current magnification setting, Wi-Fi on or off, internal microphone status, battery level, time of day, gyroscope cant left or right, reticle inclination meter, the DNT logo, quick start guide. To use your Hydra HS225 in handheld mode, press and hold the power button for two seconds to turn on the device. The blue LED light will illuminate when the device is switched on. Adjust the diopter next to the ocular lens to focus the information on the screen. You can do this with the lens cap closed. Then look at a heat source around 25 meters away and use the front focus to sharpen the image. As you scan terrain through the scope, you will need to adjust this ring regularly. Standby mode. If you want to save battery when you're not looking through the device, you can put it into a standby mode with a short press of the power button. Pressing the power button again will wake up the device and switch it back on. But this time it will be quicker as it skips the whole power up sequence. Digital zoom. Pressing the zoom button will change the digital zoom between three to 12 times magnification. Once you've cycled through by pressing the zoom again, you will return back to the three times magnification. Thermal palettes. When scanning terrain, you may find different types of thermal palette are more effective. When the device is switched on, you can change the palette with a short press on the menu button. You can select between white hot, black hot, red hot, and iron hot. Screen brightness can be adjusted with a long press of the zoom button. A brighter image in the day may be useful, but you'll probably want a lower setting at night. Recording. You can set the Hydra to record the screen by pressing the record button with a long press. You will see the red recording icon in the top left of the screen and a timer to show the recording time. Pressing the record button a second time will stop the recording. Wi-Fi connectivity. You can connect the HS225 to your smartphone via Wi-Fi and the DNT mobile app for real-time streaming, control and media transfer. To set up Wi-Fi, long press the menu button for more than two seconds. Go to Network Settings, Wi-Fi, and then toggle On. On your phone, connect to the HS225 Wi-Fi network. Enter the default password, which is 12345678. Open the DNT app, tap Devices, Add Device, and select the model. On the Devices screen, ensure you tap the Software Update link each time you use the app. That way, you will always ensure that your device is running the most up-to-date software. By tapping on this icon, you can view all of your recordings in the app. To get into the menu, you long press the menu button, which is the middle button on top of the Hydra. You'll notice there's a number of different features within that menu. So at the moment, you have clip-on. Now, to navigate the menu, press the record button to go down and the zoom button to go up and then short press the menu button to select an item and long press the menu item to go back out of that menu item. So I'll show you what I mean. So press the record button to go down to connections, short press, short press and then toggle off. 
So to toggle that back on again, short press. And as you can see, the Wi-Fi password is default to uh, numbers one through to eight. So I'm going to long press out of that menu. And again, and then go down into reticle zeroing. I just click on that just to show you how the reticle zeroing is set up. I'm not going to go through that process at the moment because I've got it in handheld mode. So you have 26 different zeroing profiles through the letters A through to Z. You have the freeze and what that does is you can toggle freeze on or off. So once you've taken your shot you would then um, align the your reticle back up to the center to your point of aim. You would then freeze the screen and then you would move the reticle onto your point of impact by actually moving the screen using the X and the Y axes. Sounds technical but basically all you're doing is you're aligning up your point of impact with um, with the reticle on the screen so you're actually moving the screen into the correct place. Once you've done that scroll down click save and then that, that will save your settings. Like I say you've got 26 settings in there so effectively this could go on 26 different rifles if you have 26 different rifles. So I'm just going to scroll down to exit The next one down is reticle settings, so let's go into reticle settings. First one is reticle. So looking at the reticles then, there are eight different reticles, two in the first focal plane and then six in the second focal plane. So if I just scroll down through each of the reticles, you can see all the different choice that you have. So I'm just going to go back to that one. So I like um, number seven, so I'm going to short press the menu button and then that will select that. There are also different reticle colors. So if we go into there, you have red, green, yellow, black, and white. I like to have it on red because then it stands out from most of the images but again it's going to depend what thermal palette you're using as to what reticle you want to choose from. So exit out of that. Okay so the next one down is picture in picture. So at the moment it's switched off but if I go into that menu we can then set the picture in picture to left so that will be a zoomed image of that area. You can see you can go in center, right. So that just depends on your personal preference to where you would like your picture in picture setting to go. I'm just going to switch that off because there's too much information on the screen for me. So if we scroll down, this is recoil activated recording. So you can switch recoil activated recording on or off. So you've got manual mode or auto mode. Okay, so let's have a look at image super resolution. So with image super resolution on, and then image super resolution off, you can see that once it's on, you can, uh, there's a bit of a sharper image, so you can actually make things out a little bit better. Scrolling down to thermal imaging settings. So thermal imaging mode, you can have highlight, where the heat sources will pop out, enhanced or natural. So just turn that to highlight. NUC, non-uniformity correction, allows you to do manual or automatic calibration of the device. So I would recommend leaving that on auto have a look at the color palettes there are four different color palettes at the moment we're in black hot so in black hot hot objects will appear darker or black in color whereas cooler objects will appear whiter in color in red hot you'll see that heat sources are more yellowy or red in color 
whereas the cooler objects appear darker or blacker in colour. Iron hot is similar to red hot, however, um, in iron hot that shows the largest temperature differences. So if there's a large temperature difference between the cool and the hot, it will appear yellower or reddy in colour, whereas the smaller or the cooler um, temperature differences will be bluer or blacker in colour. And then there is white hot. In white hot, the hotter the object, the whiter the object, whereas the cooler, the blacker the object. Image contrast, there are five different settings for contrast. Image brightness, again, different settings for brightness. Sharpness, again five settings. And then we have hotspot tracking. So turn that on. The hottest part of the image will have a red dot. You can see that moving around the screen. Turn that off. In the next menu we have function settings. So if I just go into that, you have defective pixel repair. So that will allow you to target a defective pixel and correct it. With auto power off, you can select between off, so the device will only switch off when you switch it off, or you can select power off in 10, 20 or 30 minutes. Loop recording, you can set to off. Recording blocks. 3 minute recording blocks or 5 minute recording blocks. Audio recording, you can switch the microphone on or off. You can calibrate the gyroscope within the Hydra to your rifle, so match it with your bubble level or SG pulse if you use one. And you can, um, so you can go into the calibration settings. Screen brightness, there are five different levels of brightness. If you're out in the daylight, a bright daylight today, you might want it on four or five. But if you're out at night, you may want it on level one or two so that you don't strain your eyes. So in the system settings, you can update the date and time. You can change the language between English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian. You can format the SD card. So you can restore the device back to default settings. You can check the available storage on the device and there is an internal 24 gigabyte storage card on here. And you can also check your firmware version. So if you go in there, you can check what version of firmware that you're running. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and you hit the bell icon so that you stay up to date with the notifications of when I release videos. Thanks again for watching.